Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel once again. This is Abhishek, your friend but not a financial advisor and this has been the longest gap between my videos and the reason was that I recently bought another house as a real estate investment and that was kind of a big project for me um, and it was kind of a mess to be honest. So that's why yeah, I was um, giving a lot of time and efforts in there and that's why I didn't have time to post my video and I don't think I would be able to edit and um, put this video today which is Christmas day but still I'm wearing this just to give you guys happy vibes and uh, yeah wish you guys a very Merry Christmas and about the real estate that's a topic for another video I will definitely try to cover it and uh, yeah I would present my opinion and my yeah mistakes which you guys should definitely not do but anyways in this video we are going to talk about how 2022 might look like first of all to know or to get an idea what 2022 could be in my opinion could be really volatile but why first let's discuss what the fed's decision was so guys this is a summary of the annual meeting from the fed for the year 2021 so they decided to double down the tapering that means they will slow down the buying back programs and they have signaled three 2022 hikes in the rates interest rates and also they flagged the omicron variant which is actually quite contradictory to what they said that the economy is reopening <laughs> and the economy is going good actually this will slow down the economy yeah so this was quite contradictory to what powell said based on of course okay i understand that he also mentioned that the employment rate is improving but on the other hand this variant and i don't know many more variants to come will contradict or will counter affect the economy reopening anyway so supply imbalances reopening contributed to elevated inflation yeah he agreed to that and that's when the transitory word was removed from his statement that inflation is just transitory so like i said they will cut down the buying back purchases of the treasuries and mortgage backed securities to 30 billion dollars a month which was 150 so now still they will be printing 120 billion dollars a month yeah which in my opinion is still too much but anyways putting it on track to conclude the program in early 2022 rather than mid-year as initially planned so they already made this change yeah so the plan was in the mid-year of 2022 but they changed it to early 2022 so please keep this in mind when i will be discussing further points so the plan has changed and this means the plan can change in 2022 regarding the interest rates anyways the new rate projections like i said the new rate projections marks as a major shift from the last time which was forecasted in september so guys this is what you have to really consider that these projections are just projections okay the policy can change the rate can increase much more than what has been projected so now let's have a look at the fed dot chart which they call it dot chart for the interest rates projections so guys this is how the fed's new dot plot looks like so as you can see right here in 2022 they might increase up to one percent the interest rates yeah then in 2023 it's projected to increase up to two two to two point one percent then in 2024, yeah, up to 3%. And in long term, yeah, they projected to stay up to 3%. So this is what they have projected. And this chart explains us quite nicely what happened in 2021. So change in consumer prices year over year was 6.8%, which was 40 year highs. Yeah, which was near 40 year highs. And it was not that low in October as well. And you can see that it was becoming higher and higher from May onwards and it was not getting lower and lower and this could have been a signal for the fed that the inflation is increasing okay and we can see that the change in employment rate was okay it exceeded the projections only in october only in one month so i don't understand how fed is saying that the employment rate is um, becoming much better but it exceeded the projections only one time in the whole year okay and then in the change in quarterly employment cost biggest gain since 2004 in september so this is what guys is happening in the u.s economy and it's not just in the u.s economy yeah many of my viewers have many german stocks as well and european stocks as well so let's have a look at the european market 
So guys, we can see that inflation fears are not just affecting the US stock market, but also the European stock market. And we can see Eurozone inflation was confirmed at 1.4% year over year in October, which was more than double the European Central Bank's target or was expected. Also, the UK Consumer Price Index inflation came in at an annual 4.2% in October, its highest for almost a decade with energy and automotive cost soaring. So guys, we can see that inflation is first of all not transitory. Okay, by transitory, I don't mean that it is going to vanish in one, two months. It takes time, okay? And it's not just for the US economy. It's also in the European economy because the supply chain issue and the supply and demand is affecting the whole world. OK, so we can see the automotive cost for soaring because of the supply chain issue, the shortage of the components and everything is just becoming more and more of a reason for the inflation. So it's not just the U.S. economy. And coming back to the U.S. economy, 88 percent of Americans are now worried about inflation and they are cutting back on their cost. So we can see that inflation is becoming much of a worried topic but again it should not be handled with panic that's what i would say in my opinion and especially regarding stock market or crypto market in whichever market you're investing in i am more into stock market so yeah this there is always a backup plan there is always a strategy which you can use to fight anything which is coming in the way to hamper the economy now guys what you saw with this decision in my opinion, there are a few problems. First of all, this tapering of $30 billion and still printing money and still this buying back program is a bit slow to fight inflation. I mean, just imagine Powell in January said that inflation is transitory just for the sake of votes and whatever elections. And you have the results. The consumer price index was 6.2% all time highs in the last 39 years. Yeah, and this is what is not really logical, in my opinion, to still <laughs> print the money. Yeah, if they really had to fight inflation, in my opinion, they would have to stop this printing and buying back and tapering down to zero. And of course, that would be a big backlash on the stock market. But guys, we as investors should be ready for such period from time to time every six to seven years so we should be ready for it if you are really investing into stock market anyways and when i'm saying being ready being ready for such inflatory periods and inflation i have already made a video which you can find in the icon above i have explained few things here and there you can watch that video and i will make a complete detailed video what stocks i'm personally buying in such times and uh, how my portfolio looks like. So that's the first problem, that still this process is slow in my opinion. Yes, they say that the interest rates would not be that high, the economy will be in control, but guys, look at this variant, what Omicron is causing. Yeah, if these variants will keep on mutating, which they might, then there wouldn't be a possibility to completely reopen the economy. And this will slow down the economy. So really, I don't see that this decision is really wise because they would have to print more money. And USA now is really worried about this inflation and they would definitely stop this more and more printing because, of course, Fed would want to print more money because the economy is not able to reopen itself. Yeah. And that's when inflation numbers will be rising again. And of course, to fight that, the Fed has to raise the interest rates. Yeah. So I think 2022 could be volatile because this decision might change. And after March, which they have decided to taper down in three steps, it might be a possibility that they change the decision and they raise the interest rates much higher. And that could be an alarming situation for stock market. So this is one problem which, which I think think might happen in 2022 and that's why I'm thinking that 2022 might be volatile. This is the first reason. Now, when I said that being prepared for such volatility, I am not stopping myself to pour money into the stock market. I'm just diversifying in a different way because of course, like Warren Buffett says, either you are a value investor or not, but 90% of us 
retail investors are yeah not pure warren buffett and not pure growth investor i guess but anyways i am putting my money into uh, both the markets both kind of uh, businesses the problem is that guys you have to really really understand the stock market in such situations and what is the exact situation so like i said being prepared first of all for the growth stocks what could be the problem when the interest rates rise yeah many growth stocks which don't have uh, positive cash flow they are growing based on financial help they are taking credit yeah for acquisitions for capital expenditure and when these interest rates are high and if they have already de enough debt it's impossible for them to grow this could be a really big alarming situation for many growth stocks which doesn't have positive cash flow that's why i am not putting when i am choosing growth stocks i'm not choosing just random growth stocks which are nowhere near in the future are going to make positive cash flow i'm not choosing such companies okay i'm not choosing such businesses so i am choosing growth stocks yes but i'm choosing those growth stocks which are unique in their business ideas yeah i have less competition and who have the possibility to generate positive cash flow in the coming two to three years anyways so that's why you really have to be careful when you're investing into growth stocks in such times and uh, i'm not saying that don't invest into growth <laughs> anyways i'm not saying anything what you guys should be doing you should be doing your own due diligence but this video is to just inform you guys how in my opinion 2022 could be a volatile year and how I this decision is not that that good of a decision I mean it soothe it's soothing to hear that okay interest rates might not rise and many retail investors are hyped up about this but you have to really think from the worst case scenario okay now the other reason guys why i think 2022 might get more volatile is because of the increase in the margin debt now like i just explained that because of low interest rates fed has thrown a red carpet for the growth stocks to borrow money at low interest rates to perform acquisitions or get more and more debt similarly investors also borrow money from brokerages to short sell the securities which we saw a lot in 2020 and 2021 which has increased the margin debt to historically high values now last time the margin debt was as high as over 60 percent was during the dot-com bubble and now it also is increasing at a really alarming rate because of so many short sellers out there and this is increasing as we have seen with many growth stocks as well short selling reports and this and that short seller percentage on the float value increasing and so this is also not that good for the stock market so of course margin debt gives you an amplification on your gains but on the other hand it is also really bad if the cycle becomes a closed loop yeah people have margin debt they borrow money and then when the stock market or the price of the stock falls or rises let's say in that case it becomes a closed loop and this is bad news for the stock market in that case so increase of margin debt in 2022 could also become quite alarming for the stock market indeed and this again brings us to our point why we should really keep a check on our portfolio and strategize our portfolio and make a strategy for our portfolio it doesn't mean that we should stop investing into stock market it simply means diversification in a proper way now like i said guys i'm not stopping myself from pouring money into the stock market i'm diversifying yeah now on the other hand growth investor like katie woods she mentioned recently that for her the problem is not inflation she's not worried about inflation because during inflation many companies who are generating positive cash flow according to her have increased their dividend um, uh, yield and uh, are buying back shares so they have increased their buying back share programs and this according to her is yeah it's to attract investors of course it's it's true and according to her these businesses will suffer when deflation will happen yeah uh, because they instead of investing money back into their business they spend more money into increase their dividend yield uh, not upgrading their technology and uh, buying back their own shares so they spend money to attract investors in such times like cyclical stocks let's say and on the other hand when deflation will occur then these growth stocks these tech stocks will prosper because then of course the technology 
will be at the hype and these businesses which spend more money in buying back their own shares or attracting investors and not upgrading their technology will suffer and i do agree with her about deflation yeah because deflation will come for example in case of supply chain let's say when the supply chain issue will improve the supply will improve and the prices will come down eventually okay so in some areas the deflation will come sooner than later and in some areas the deflation might come yeah a bit late but deflation will come inflation is not gonna stay forever okay guys of course it's transitory in my opinion as well but not like transitory that it will just vanish away in one month or two months yeah you have to take a decision to make it transitory which fed in my opinion didn't take the right decision so anyways that's just my personal opinion and this is not any financial advice so this is what is gonna happen in my opinion guys of course you have to be ready you have to be ready anyways when you're invested into stock market for any downfall and yeah you that's that's what stock market is all about so anyways i don't want to stress this video long like i said i presented my opinion and how you should be prepared for inflation and uh, yeah inflation is not good for the stock market if the interest rates rise yeah to fight inflation fed has to really take some drastic decisions which they didn't take they are just i don't know trying to save their seat trying to save their position and it's trying to soothe the u.s yeah, economy this is not the way but anyways that's just my personal opinion anyways i hope this video i i would be able to edit this video today so in that case merry christmas and uh, have a nice day and i will be posting another video soon i hope yeah and until then stay safe stay healthy and Ciao.